Hello and welcome, and welcome back for those of you who subscribe to this channel. Now I am standing at the bottom of the T-bar, and I'm going to start out here because it's pretty windy up top, but I'm going to take this first run down Horseshoe Bowl because that seemed to have the best snow the last few times that I was out. Today is January 31st. We got a little bit of snow in the past week, and we are expecting some more in the next few days. And snowpack is still about average for this time of year. All right, so I'm going to try a different uh, camera angle. This time I've got the GoPro on my helmet, and we'll see if this gives uh, a better sense of uh, steepness here in the Horseshoe Bowl. You've seen me ski this uh, if you watched the last couple of videos with the camera mounted on my chest. So now we're going to try this angle. And let's go make some turns. So, very wind blown. All right, so now I'm cutting it over towards the Vista House. I'm gonna find something out of the wind. All right, so that's the Vista House restaurant over there. I'm gonna cut it here and uh, make some camera adjustments. So I wasn't gonna try to film up here again because it was so cold and windy the first time, but uh, it looked like it was trying to clear up a little bit, so I figured I'd give it another shot. I still have the camera up on my helmet. Now I'm looking over towards peak six. Now I'm looking up towards the top of Pika. That's one of the easier ways down off the T-bar. Then I'm looking over towards Baldy and Boreas. Really, I'm just testing out to see what this looks like. Since I haven't shot a lot with the, the camera up on my head right now, uh, I've got the um, GoPro Hero 8 up there set to uh, linear mode, which will crop it in a little bit. And that's how I shot that previous run down Horseshoe Bowl. I think I'm gonna set the camera to uh, wide angle to ski Horseshoe Bowl again. All right, so let's try this again. Hopefully the light's a little better 
and we've got a slightly better camera angle and this time I'm on a wide angle instead of linear on the Hero 8. Let's make some turns. So I'd say that was a little bit better. But I think I'm gonna take it over to uh, Peak 7 and check out the new chairlift. So toilet bowl is not on the map, but it's those trees down there. Somebody was asking in the comments about my favorite trees. Those are some of them. Yeah, and let me know in the comments if you like this uh, helmet angle or push you go back to the chest mount. The main reason I'm doing this now is because it was too cold and windy at the top of the T-bar to mess with the chest harness.
So this is the independence chair on my right. And I'm gonna cut it here a little bit before the bottom of the chair because part of what I'm doing out here today is getting shots of the base areas for some uh, real estate videos. So that's Crystal Peak Lodge right there. And it's not in the best of light, but uh, I am gonna get some shots of these and uh, use it for something else. I'm a real estate broker when I'm not out shooting ski videos. So I'll pick this back up at the top of the independence chair. All right, so I just got off the top of uh, the independence chair right there. Over that way is Pioneer Crossing, cafeteria, restrooms, and that is the top of the Freedom Chair. So I've gotten uh, quite a few questions about where that chair was put in. So it services all of the same terrain as the Independence Chair, and I am now going to ski down to the bottom of the Freedom Chair so that you can see that. I don't know if you were able to catch that sign, but that's the Zendo that I just passed. And just downhill with the Zendo chair is the new Freedom chair. And I will cut it here and pick it back up at the top of the Freedom Chair. All right, so top of the Freedom Chair, and I am now gonna take it as far skiers right as I can. And I'm working my way back down to uh, the uh, base area for peak eight. One of the things I'm doing out here today is 
trying to get some video of all the base areas for a real estate client. And for those of you new to this channel, I am a Breckenridge real estate broker. That's what I do when I'm not shooting ski videos. So obviously I got off the freedom chair, but if you were taking the, uh, the independence chair, you would come the same way if you wanted to go to the base of Peak 8. And obviously, Make sure you're not cutting anybody off on the T-bar. So a little bit of a cold and windy day today. I didn't get everything shot that I had hoped to, but I just came out of the uh, Vista House restaurant there. It's at the top of the Colorado chair. And I have finished up my last uh, two or three videos of the season so far, uh, basically from this point heading down either four o'clock or Springmeyer. This time I'm going to work my way back to the village uh, taking a different route which is to go past the bottom of each chair and uh, take Frosty's freeway down. So I'll show you that way this time. Right now I'm crossing under the PK Super Connect. like psychopath has been groomed so frosty's freeway is off to my right So I started out the first few turns on Frosty's Freeway, but then on the left I got into Lower Psychopath, and this is now the bottom of E-Chair. Okay, so I just got off of E-Chair. It's about 50 yards up that way. I'm standing at the top of the Mercury Chair, and I'm gonna take my last run down Columbia on my way back to the village, which is where I always finish up. Oop, and I forgot to adjust the camera. I think that should be better, I hope. So I definitely didn't get everything shot today that I was hoping for. 
really came out here today to test a new camera and uh, I will definitely be using that some more this season but I think I got a little bit of uh, test footage that I can play with Ah, and I'm an American. I said Columbia. Now, this is American. Columbia would be off to my right. I thought I'd go there because I thought snow would be in a little better shape, but this is okay. Hopefully tonight, start getting some snow for the next couple of days. And now I'm cutting my way across underneath the Beaver Run super chair. This is underneath the Mercury chair. And once I get new camera figured out I've got some ideas for some videos that I intend to shoot later on in this season and one of the videos I intend to shoot is uh, kind of how I started this channel which was on this run right here Silverthorn one of the easiest runs pretty much I've ever seen. I grew up skiing in Vermont, mostly. Some New Hampshire, Massachusetts. And when I was in college, I skied most of the major destinations in the Rocky Mountains. And there really aren't too many runs like this one, Silverthorn. Very flat, very easy. I'm going to bring it down what we call the ballet hill now, but if I were to go that way, that's called King's Way. That's the easiest way down. And where I am right now, we call it the ballet hill because there used to be uh, ballet competitions. It was a form of freestyle skiing that was more popular in the 80s. Haven't seen any of that in a long time. Uh, Beaver Run over to my left. And the clock tower of the village off in the distance that way. So I'll go ahead and cut it here and probably try to uh, piece in some of my test footage from the new camera towards the end here. But I hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and we will see you again on the next one.